Welcome once again to Forecast Lab, the forecast program for the discriminating hobbyist or professional. No hype, just solid weather content. Looking at that satellite photo, we can see some wildfire smoke across the Carolinas and entrained into that system off the East Coast. A look at our climate indicators does show that the North Atlantic Oscillation is trending downwards, indicating a slightly more blocky pattern. The PNA, which is associated with ridging in western Canada and troughing in the Aleutians, that's increasing. So that will support a northwesterly flow for probably several days into the northern U.S., the Arctic Oscillation also is trending downwards, indicating a slightly slower hemispheric flow. And the Madden Julian Oscillation is remaining weak. Looking at the western horizon around sunset, Mercury very low on the horizon and Mars just above that. That definitely appears slightly reddish when you see it there in the sky. And up high to the west is Arcturus. That is a very bright star, one of the brighter ones, along with Vega and Sirius, 37 light years away, and it's a red giant, 25 times as big as the sun and 170 times as bright. Here's the surface map for this afternoon showing that wildfire smoke from Lake Huron all the way down through Virginia and the Carolinas. Fortunately, most of the country is not having to deal with that right now. But we do have this east-west front bisecting the country, extending from Colorado through northern Alabama and into Georgia. And you can see some showers along the length of that front from Iowa down to the Nashville area and down to Atlanta. That has put down this outflow pool right there, centered on northern Missouri, Here's a look at AWIPS with the surface plots. It does show that a lot of the precipitation is somewhat elevated. However, with precipitable water up above two inches through this corridor, it's pretty easy to underestimate the potential for precipitation. So a lot of these areas getting well above one to two inches. Fortunately, much cooler weather. We see lots of 70s on this map, but look at those dew points upper 60s to low 70s. And here's what we mean when we talk about high precipitable water. The color shading indicates the precipitable water in inches. The scale up here at the top, which is indicating that cyan colors are one to one and a half inches, purple is 1.5 to two, and the lighter purple is above two inches. So some of the higher precipitable water values all the way from Carbondale, Cairo, Paducah up towards Des Moines. And that means very efficient precipitation processes in any convection that gets going through that area. And we can see the secondary moisture axis from Louisiana up the Mississippi River. And there's another way we can take a look at that with the one kilometer mixing ratio. Shows a very similar picture at one kilometer, that's the richest moisture corresponding to very high dew points at that level. Now again, this is specific humidity or mixing ratio. That's measured in grams per kilogram. So let's see, that cyan color, that's gonna be about 14 to 16 grams per kilogram. And if we look at a genuine skew T chart, well, we gotta know where one kilometer is. That's gonna be about 930 millibars in that part of the country. We find 14 to 16. There it is right there. That's the mixing ratio line. So that puts us right in here. And from there, it's an easy process of reading off the dew points. Just drop down to the bottom and you're looking at mid to upper 60s dew points at that level. And at one kilometer, that is pretty high. And you're probably wondering how I got that one kilometer. Well, these skew tees have a overprint on the left and right side. This is in feet and meters. Let me scroll that so you can see a little bit better. So there's one kilometer MSL. So from there, it's a fairly easy process to guess where 
the heights you want to look at are located. However, one problem with a lot of internet charts is they don't give you scales. The charts are simplified, so it does help to have a kind of a working understanding of SKU-Ts and be familiar with the paper versions because there is more information on those charts. And if you want to get those paper charts, go to weathergraphics.com slash reference. That's my website, and I've got all those paper charts posted on there. In some cases, these are the only places on the internet to get them. So definitely check that out. And while I have you here, if I can talk you into picking up one of my books, feel free to do that. The new Weather Map Handbook was released in the past couple of months. And of course, the second edition of Weather Analysis and Forecasting is definitely worth picking up if you don't have that already. And this afternoon, we're also dealing with the monsoon from northwestern Arizona through the Grand Canyon region, right up through Bryce Canyon and Cedar City, and up to Salt Lake City as well. Some of that monsoon activity also in the higher terrain of central Nevada as well. And you can see temperatures are way down. We're seeing a lot of lower 60s in the higher elevations around Cedar City. And even Las Vegas, a very pleasant 88 degrees at this hour. You can see the outflow from that complex blowing southwestward from the northeast and kind of radiating away from this mesoscale convective complex. And that's how it looks on the surface analysis. Also pleasant conditions in California. 70s and lower 80s in the San Joaquin Valley. This time of year, very easy to see it up in the 100s. The oceanic Pacific High, right there off the coast, and heading north into western Canada and Alaska, that wildfire smoke continues in the Northwest Territories. This has been plaguing that region for the past three weeks, and some of it starting to infiltrate the interior of Alaska as well. They will be seeing a warming trend in central Alaska all the way through Monday. We're going to be seeing 70s in that part of the country. And up north, a little bit of a change. We've got an outbreak of colder air coming out of the Arctic region. Temperatures have fallen to near freezing at Grease Fjord around Resolute and back towards Rhea Point. And it's even driving away some of the warmer air in southwest Nunavut, temperatures down into the 60s. And going back down south into Canada, wildfire smoke all the way through Saskatchewan into central Manitoba and down along James Bay. And we're even getting some thunderstorms this afternoon ahead of this warm front. Those are those thunderstorms right there around Fort Severn, right there in the Hudson Bay region, and that's an area where they have polar bears. They, they're actually that far south. Strange to think that they've got thunderstorms going on in that same region. There's Big Rig Steve driving north along Interstate 55 in southeastern Missouri, close to New Madrid. They had a very bad earthquake there almost 200 years ago. At the very top of the screen, you can see dense, twisted sheaves of cirrus. That's remnants of thunderstorm anvils. Let's get a closer look at that on the satellite imagery. All right, so that's the view from overhead. Big Rick Steve located right there. We're looking to the north. And if we roll the satellite animation, yeah, that definitely had an origin from thunderstorm activity earlier today. And we bring that to the current time. A lot of that activity is starting to die out and becoming elevated. But of course, we're watching for regeneration. Where is that going to take place? Well, there is some new convection right there in the higher elevations of the Ozarks. The high-resolution rapid refresh, looking for some development between Columbia and St. Louis right there. And you can see that aggregates into a organized MCS and tracks down that very same area near Interstate 55 and Interstate 57. So probably a busy night for the Paducah area, Cape Girardeau, and southern Illinois as well. So the high-resolution rapid refresh focusing on this region right here underneath this dense cirrus overcast. Not very many clues on the satellite imagery, but if we go to the surface analysis, 
there we can see a little bit of convergence in the wind field. That's the moisture flowing north. And of course, we remember from that earlier analysis, the higher moisture values located right in there. So quite a few ingredients coming together. And this is a great time to use that SPC mesoanalysis. We focus on Missouri. A good product to use is going to be that surface divergence and vorticity. So it does look like some of the stronger convergence is just north of Interstate 44, north of Springfield, and extending just south of St. Louis. So part of the forecast process is resolving some of this surface data with the model indications. And very likely, these features are embedded in the southerly flow, so we'll probably see a bit of a northward drift as the afternoon continues. And as we drop southwest, oh, this awful heat just goes on and on. And you can see those 100s are nosing into southwestern Missouri, 101 at Joplin at the Sour, 103 at Chanute, Kansas, and the 100 line goes all the way back towards Hutchinson and just south of Liberal, Kansas. Oklahoma City, 103 this afternoon, 104 at Tulsa, and 106 at Coffeyville. They had the all-time hailstone record up until about 20 years ago, and Wellington, Kansas, up to 107. Dropping south into Texas, yep, as you guessed it, the usual heat, 104 at DFW at the Sour, 101 at Houston Intercontinental, and 99, oh, a nice cool down at San Antonio. Heading west into New Mexico, temperatures fall off into the 90s, dew points are in the 40s, 50s, and even a few low 60s. And heading into Arizona, 108 at Phoenix at this hour, 99 at Tucson, but it will get warmer and warmer as we go into the weekend. We're looking for 114 this weekend in Phoenix and 110 at Tucson. And as we head to the northwest, yep, there's that monsoon and some very cool temperatures at Ely, Nevada. The upper level charts are the key to the heat wave. And you can see 595 decimeter high right there over North Texas. No wonder we're getting so much of that heat through the south central U.S. Over the next few days, we're going to be seeing that upper level highs start to build a little bit westward into southern Arizona. So the heat will be on the increase in that part of the country. But we are hanging on to a fragment there in Texas going into next week. So I guess we're not really done with the heat. The center of the high does settle in over Deming, El Paso, and Douglas, and Bisbee. And then going into the midweek period, that high just kind of settles in over the northwest Mexican region, some of it extending over Texas. But we are opening up that northwesterly flow, and we're going to discuss that in a little bit more detail on Friday's show. And you can see a couple waves moving through around Wednesday and Thursday, so the precip will be on the increase in the north central U.S. How far south that's going to come, it's not really clear at this time. Focusing on the tropics, a very quiet start. This is a chart that shows you all the key elements going on in the Atlantic region. There's the U.S., there's the Atlantic, there's West Africa, and there's South America. And what I've got on here is vorticity that helps show where there's strong curl and turning and closed circulations in the flow. And it even picks up some artifacts such as the South American coastline. So you're not going to worry too much about that. But we do see out there in the southeastern Atlantic some disturbances trying to organize there off of West Africa. And as we go forward, yeah, see right there? A little closed low. Doesn't seem to develop very much but it does wander westward as we go through the weekend and approaches the Leeward Islands around Monday and Tuesday. And not much development. So that's going to be a easterly wave. There's the next area of interest right there off of Senegal and Guinea. And as we go forward into late next week, another little circulation trying to wrap up and come together. This is getting way out into the extended, so we're not going to pick nits here. 
but it does look like a slight ramp up in activity there off the West African coast. And that's the last frame that we have. A little closed low right there off of Senegal. So it looks like we've got a good two weeks of no weather in the Gulf of Mexico, Caribbean, or Western Atlantic. That doesn't rule out something forming in here, but the models have not really picked up on anything like that taking place. So the short-term forecast using the NAM, a lot of the interesting weather is going to be in Missouri. You're going to see a convective complex coming together right there, along Interstate 70 and moving down the Mississippi River. The monsoon also active in that same area we discussed and extending as far east as the Colorado Front Range. So as we go into the midnight hours, that's going to be midnight, looks like MCS activity all the way from Evansville back to Paducah and into southeastern Missouri. The monsoon activity in the central U.S., that tends to be very diurnal. A lot of it's starting to shut down as we lose heating. And you can see this MCS out there in Tennessee and Kentucky continuing to push southeastward into the deeper moisture. So that's going to be tomorrow morning. Looks like a lot of rain through Tennessee, Nashville, all the way back towards Knoxville, Asheville, and far western Virginia. And you can see that monsoon activity lifting even further north into Montana, Wyoming, and Idaho for tomorrow. So by peak heating, it looks like this. Also looking at activity on the Colorado Front Range down towards Guymon and Dowhart, and possibly some regeneration out there in Alabama, I don't know if this stuff's going to get going, but there's the forecast. Yeah, it doesn't look like much regeneration for tomorrow in the southeastern U.S., although in the Carolinas and southern Georgia could be kind of a wet picture there. There's a look at the SPC Day 2 for tomorrow, looking at an enhanced risk around the Goodland area up to Binkleman, back towards Russell and Colby, Kansas. Tornado risks pretty much zero there, but significant threat of wind damage and hail as well. NSPC also focusing on a little area up there in northeastern Alabama. That's going to be in a marginal risk region. And that's all for this edition of Forecast Lab. I want to thank the new Patreon support from Brian Nelson and James Taylor. Thank you very much for your support. I do appreciate that. We'll see everybody back here again on Friday for another edition of Forecast Lab. Hope you have a great Wednesday evening. Take care and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.